What's going on YouTube? OCD for EDC here. And what I got for your face balls today is some more on this little guy right here. This is the Tepe Design Hornet 2. And we are going to dissect a Hornet today. And this will not be the full review of this knife, but we're definitely going to get into uh, what makes this thing tick and what makes it so fantastic. Uh, before I do that, I actually want to show you a couple of things that uh, Mr. Sean Hassan over at Tepe Design has going on right now. Uh, the reason I want to bring this up is because uh, one of these knives, which I do not have here to show off, but I am going to show you some pictures of. So this right here is the Tepe Design Killage, and this is still available for pre-order. Uh, it comes from the same factory, uh, which we're going to talk about here in just a little bit as the Hornet 2. So this should be a really good representation of the build quality that you're going to see. And this is the Killage. I personally have not handled one of these, although I'm definitely, definitely going to get in on this pre-order because this thing looks stellar. So you've got this uh, marble carbon fiber insert that's on both sides and you can get it with either the Damascus blade or you can get it with the S35 VN blade. So just absolutely gorgeous. Sorry for all the, the light uh, reflection here. I'm trying to show these pictures off on my iPad, but it does have a blue titanium uh, backspacer as well as pocket clip. And it does have a ceramic ball in the pocket clip. Um, oh, I guess the inlay is not on the other side. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, just a gorgeous looking knife, kind of a Persian upswept style blade with uh, a nice thumb ramp. You know, it looks really, really good in the photographs and there it is with the S35, just a, a really, really gorgeous knife. So anyway, um, I will link, uh, his email or not, I'm sorry, not email, but website, uh, down in the description. So go check it out. It is tepedesign.bigcartel.com where you can order these knives from and you can pre-order the Hornet 2. You can pre-order the Killage and then he also has the original Hornet uh, and some other things on there. So he's got some really, really cool stuff. He's got some, uh, some swag hats and different things. Uh, so really cool. But... Like I said, I'll, I'll throw links up in the description so you guys can go check out his website and get in on these pre-orders. I think the Killage, it says that it's shipping in March, um, and it's $216. So that thing's uh, 8 inches overall uh, with a 3.5 inch blade on the Killage and just over 4 ounces in weight. So pretty cool knife, but... We're here today to talk about the Hornet 2. And this thing has absolutely impressed me uh, from the moment that I got it. I'm gonna grab a little piece of paper here. So this is just a, you know, like phone book paper, a flyer that came in the mail. Uh, this is one of the best edges that I have ever seen on a factory knife. Uh, just absolutely stellar edge on this thing and you know uh hogue does a really good job with their edges while i'm screwing it up here but this thing is every bit as sharp uh, you know i don't know if it's the sharpest knife i've ever seen right out of the factory but it's really really close i do not have a sharpness tester uh, that's something that i should get but uh, this thing has a stellar edge on it right out of the box, which is always uh, always a nice deal. So as far as hardware on this guy, you've got T8 on the pivot, and then the body screws and the clip screw are all T6. I know that's something that some people, uh, you know, don't like. And of course, for me, um, you know, I'm happy when all the hardware is T8 or T10 or something like that. But T6s are fine, uh, you know, just pay attention to what you're doing and don't get carried away. 
if you start to put too much torque on a screw, uh, stop what you're doing. You know, the things, the screws are small and you may need to, if there is a Loctite, which there has not been on any of these so far, but if there is Loctite, uh, you know, you can take care of that by heating it up with a soldering iron or there's a few different methods out there, but soldering iron is uh, one of the things that I like to use. You can pick up a soldering iron for next to nothing. Uh, you know, 10 bucks, I'll buy you just a decent little soldering iron so you can heat up the screws and get them out without breaking them uh, or breaking your bit or twisting them off or all those sorts of things. So <clears throat> let's start getting into this guy here. So, of course, this is full carbon fiber. There is some oil there. Let me get rid of that. And you can see, oh, there's quite a bit of oil. You can see that on this side here, we have a, a full nested stainless steel liner. And it is black in color. You get that little pin out of there. So here's your little lanyard pin at the back of the knife. And it is shouldered or you know turned down on both sides so it fits into the carbon which is really nice let me get this liner off of here sorry guys i don't know if you can hear or not but my dogs are running around i'm shooting this video in an area of my house that has hardwood floors and so the dogs make some noise as they're running around so anyway this here is the stainless steel liner. You can see that you've got uh, some weight relieving going on in the center there, and that lines up with the three holes, so it is a completely see-through design. So you can see how nicely that liner fits in there. It's completely nested, and you have really great access to the lock bar. Really, really nice. All right, let's keep going here. So we've got double row ceramic bearings and they're nylon caged and just really, really nicely done. You can see the, the pocket there in the blade where the bearing sits down inside the blade. You know, those things are important <clears throat> uh, when they nest it like this inside the blade, it keeps everything much tighter uh, and that helps to keep the uh, dirt and debris and stuff out of there. You know, the tighter the scales are to the blade, uh, the better better off you're going to be without getting a whole bunch of junk and stuff in there. So here's the pivot. And it is tooled on both sides. Uh, it is a free spinning pivot, but like I said, it's tooled on both sides. And then you've got... Things are falling apart here. So you've got... This is the barrel spacer with the other side or body screw. Uh, and this one's for the pocket clip and then this one here is just the the other body screw so it's nicely done with the barrel spacers and hardware the back spacer you can see there is full carbon fiber as well and then this is your little lanyard cut out and that pin goes right in the center there so here is the show side scale you got a blade stop here get that out it's nice uh you know, large diameter blade stop pin. It's really nicely done. And again, there's your other uh, multi-row ceramic bearing. And then, of course, you've got a stainless steel washer. So your bearing's not riding on the carbon. So, oop, my driver's mag magnetized a little bit here. So there you go. Really nice polished stainless steel washer. And here is your show side scale. So <clears throat> you can see here, guys, the carbon on this thing is just, it's perfect. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, this is the inside of the knife and it's really, really well done. And then it's contoured. These scales are contoured. It's just, this thing is quickly becoming uh, my favorite knife that I've ever handled. Uh, this thing is just absolutely stellar. I love the size. I love the, uh, the grip on this thing, the size, the, it just fits my hand perfectly. And, uh, as a matter of fact, just a second. 
I should have been a little more prepared here. But this uh, TS-127 that I actually have a giveaway going on right now for <clears throat> is a knife that I really love and enjoy. And you can see here that the handles on the Hornet 2 are very, very similar to the 127. So it's no surprise that I really, really love the Hornet 2 because this is a fantastic knife and the ergos on this thing are really stellar if you have bigger hands for sure but you know i haven't had anyone yet tell me that they don't like the way that the ts127 feels in hand and the uh, hornet is no exception to that rule this thing is absolutely stellar in hand with the contoured scales it's slightly thinner than the uh, ts127 so let me get a towel here Sorry guys, my dogs are barking at something out there. I'm not sure what's going on. or, But uh, anyway, we're just going to keep plowing through here. So you can see that we've got an M390 blade. And this one happens to be number 21. You can see right there. And then it is a blind hole on the detent. Uh, you can see the detent track there. The only thing, and I'm... I'm really nitpicking here, but the, the only thing that I would like to see on this knife is a detent ball ramp. Uh, but like I said, guys, I mean, I'm other than that, this thing is absolutely stellar. One of the really cool things on this knife is this pocket clip. So not only is it worked out perfectly, so you can see here you've got these milled lines in the scales and, you know, just there for some aesthetic uh flare if you will but you can see this this uh, milled groove that runs through the center between the three holes here and then you can see the the d-shaped hole where the pocket clip sits down in there when that pocket clip sits in that hole let me get it lined up here that ball rests exactly right between dead centered right between those two holes and it lines up with that little milled line uh if I can show that off, I don't, it's hard to get it in there to show you, but, but that thing is lined up right, right in that little groove right there. And the pocket clip is canted off a little bit. So when it's in your pocket, you know, your hand isn't rubbing up against the flipper tab, which the flipper tab's not massive, uh, but it does stick out there a bit. It's really nice when designers do that, you know, just take all those things into consideration. The, uh, <clears throat> the tension on the liner lock uh, is is very very light um, you know it's totally adequate for the knife it's just you know it's real easy to disengage the lock uh, lock up on it is absolutely perfect and then uh, on this pocket clip this ceramic ball and I've seen this on a few knives but this ball actually rolls it's uh, it's not fixed in that space uh, you know, I've got a Todd Begg knife, which I'm pretty sure Todd Begg is the guy who invented or, you know, came up with using the ceramic ball on a pocket clip. He was the first one to do that, which kudos to him because I really like him. Not only does it look cool, but it's super functional. Uh, but most of them, uh, the ball is fixed and it does not move. This one is pressed in there. You can see the little uh, area there. And but it moves, it rolls, which is absolutely amazing. And the other thing is, is there is, the ball doesn't move around. So the tolerances there are absolutely stellar. You know, the ball doesn't have play up and down, uh, but you can spin it. Uh, so, I mean, it's, you know, it's hard to show that off because that ceramic ball, it's hard to tell that it's actually spinning, but it absolutely is. Uh, which is just really, really cool. So you can see there's even some, you know, weight relieving and, uh, you know, given the, the lock bar or the, the pocket clip, good tension, good spring tension there. Um, just super, super cool. And the pocket clip is also contoured and so super comfortable in hand. I'm just really, really impressed with the quality and the build on this knife. So I, I asked Sean about this knife and where, where it was manufactured, and he told me it comes from a manufacturer in China called He Knives. 
uh, He Knife Company, uh, H-E. And I had never heard of them before, but I can tell you that this thing, with the way it's made, these guys are doing stellar work. Now, I don't know what the HRC is on this M390 here. I would love to, to test it, but this isn't my knife. Um, however, you look at everything, you know, you can see all the chamfering around the opening hole there, all the chamfering on the top edges. You got this really cool looking swedge up here. Just, it's absolutely gorgeous. And <clears throat> I had a guy ask me what the actual cutting length is on this blade. So uh, he was asking me to use a, uh, you know, like a seamstress tape or a cloth tape to measure it. So we're going to do that here. So we're going to burn an inch. This might be a little bit fumble fucking around, but, but I'm going to do it. So right there, you can see that the one inch mark is lined up right there at the heel of the blade. And we're going to, so look at that guys. We are right on, or maybe even just a, just a skosh over actual four inch cutting edge. Actually, it might be a little, yeah, right there. So, yeah, we're just a little bit, just a tiny bit over a four inch cutting edge. So you got a true four inches of cutting edge on this blade. And this thing is, let me get my calipers out here. So let's pull a few measurements. We'll see what we're dealing with here for thickness behind the edge. This is a real bitch to do on camera. So right here at the, the heel of the blade, you're looking about 22 thousandths. And let's get one right out in the middle here somewhere. Again, your 22. Right there, so we're a little thinner, about 20 thousandths. And then we'll get out here right on the very tip of the knife. Good Lord, this is a bitch to do on camera. So we're about 23 thousandths, 22, so it's pretty consistent. Uh, you know, between 20 to 22 thousandths all the way across. Um, but you got a really high flat grind on this guy and a beautiful stone wash. Just really, really nice and consistent stone wash on here. Uh, as far as billboarding is concerned, it's nothing that bothers me. I hear people talk a lot about billboarding on blades. You know, some of them are kind of ridiculous. I, you know, like Microtech, I think, is kind of one of the worst offenders of it. But uh, the Tepe Design logo looks really sweet. Um, I've been into motocross my whole life, so to me it just looks like a double Honda wing, uh, which is fine with me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so his logo looks very nice. And then, of course, on this side, it's, com you know extremely sterile with the exception of you've got the number 21 and then you've got the m390 down here on the flipper tab but the flipper tab no jimping but you can see everything is really really nicely contoured every single edge has been softened and just it's it's really gorgeous it really is i mean this he knife company just did a absolutely stellar job constructing this knife so anyway, uh, so if you, if you are interested in the killage, uh, you know, like I said, it, it is made by the same manufacturer, which is fantastic because they are definitely doing quality work. There's no two ways about it. So we're going to put this guy back together here. So the longer of the two uh, in the back goes in first. 
so the you've got the longer uh, barrel spacer for the uh, pocket clip back there you got the back spacer put in and here is the little lanyard pin let me get that guy in there okay and then we've got our stainless steel washer get that guy down there I am gonna throw a tiny bit of oil on this guy just a couple little drops here okay we'll get get the blade stop in Sorry about that. I had a phone call coming in that I'm going to have to deal with in a moment. So we'll get a bearing on here. And then set the blade down. Put the other bearing down. I am going to use a tiny bit of KPL Heavy right here on the detent and I'm just going to throw just a tiny bit right in the detent ball uh, hole right here. Just like that. And then we will get our liner on. Excellent. Now we will get the scale on. Perfect. There we go. I'm just going to throw this uh, pivot screw in here real quick just to kind of hold things together. Sorry if my big fat hands are in the way. But uh, I'm going to line up the pocket clip, get it set down in its hole. So you can see that this knife, uh, you know, comes apart and goes back together extremely easily. Um, you know, it's always a good, uh, good sign when things come apart easily and are easy to put back together. You know, manufacturing is just extremely well done. Uh, and, you know, we'll see here, get this screw started. Uh, hopefully, this thing will be perfectly centered. Sorry, guys, my dogs are driving me nuts. I'm not sure what's going on. There's probably a cat outside or something. I have no idea. But uh, we're almost finished with this. So I'm just going to keep pushing through. So as you can see there, blade centering, absolutely perfect. Zero blade play. Action is stellar. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. Sorry about the dogs, guys. I, <laughs> not a whole lot I can do about it right now, and I was right at the end. So anyway, I'm going to throw links up in the description. Check out Tepe Designs. Go to his website. Check out the pre-order. Uh, you can get this guy. Uh, it's If you uh, pre-order it, you can get this one right here for $225, uh, which is just a, an amazing price on an amazing knife that from any other manufacturer would probably be $400. I mean, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. And uh, so thanks so much, guys, for watching this. Like I said, I apologize about the dogs. Uh, check out my giveaway video for the TS-127 uh, that's going on right now. If you want to get involved in that, make sure to, to go over there. This giveaway ends uh, this coming Sunday night. And, yeah, I got a bunch of links and stuff. I've had a lot of people asking me about Tucson since I put up that giveaway video. I've got a ton of links down in my description. Uh, if you want to check out a Tucson knife, there's some really great ones down there that you can pick up from Amazon. Get them in a couple of days for, you know, 50, 60, 70 bucks. Uh, you know, a few of them are 100 or more, but, but the majority are under $100. So thanks so much, guys, for all your support. 
I've really enjoyed uh, how much the channel's grown uh, here recently, and and I can't thank you guys enough. So, like, comment, subscribe, all that normal bullshit, and uh, yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.